This year is gonna be a big year for Elder Scrolls Online, which is celebrating its 10 year anniversary. So it's no surprise that this year's expansion is going to be adding things that not only have we not seen in ESO, but we've never seen in any Elder Scrolls title before. To say they're going big this year is an understatement. So when Bethesda offered to fly me out to Amsterdam and pay for my lodging so that I could join them in their reveal for the Gold Road chapter, I gladly accepted. And if you haven't done it yet, be sure to use the link in my description to purchase the newest chapter, Gold Road. Shout out to Bethesda for sponsoring this video. Before I get into more detail about everything that was announced, I'll foreshadow this conversation by saying that I have never seen ESO announce so much good stuff in a single event before. So what all was announced? I'm glad you asked. One of the first big things that was announced was something that you can dive in and enjoy right now, regardless of whether you've purchased the expansion or not. This is the prologue quest for ESO's new chapter, Gold Road, which is launching on June 3rd for PC and June 18th for console. So if you've been craving some new ESO content to dive into, you're in luck. You can dive in and start the quest by claiming it for free from the Crown Store right now. I would also say that if you enjoy lore and the stories in Elder Scrolls Online, it's 100% worth it to go back and play through next Necrom's expansion, which was released last year. It definitely offers a bit of a foundation on which Gold Road is going to be built this year, but as always, it's not required that you play it to enjoy Gold Road. The game continues to be cleverly built in such a way that you can jump in and enjoy any expansion in any order that you want, and as such will offer enough backstory for you to get the gist of what's going on around you while you enjoy it whether or not you've played the previous expansions. All this to say, Necrom ended on an epic cliffhanger, so definitely dive in and wrap it up before Gold Road drops if you can. The new zone coming with Gold Road will be called Westweald, and will be found west of Cyrodiil, just north of Valenwood. It will feature multiple new regions, from autumn-inspired areas to my favorite of the bunch, which is Dawnwood. Here, the encroaching jungles of Valenwood have seemingly sprouted up and claimed a large chunk of this land overnight. Something is afoot here, but what? And what do those green pack followers have to do with it? These are questions I need to know the answer to. This chapter is going to include things that longtime fans of ESO have come to expect, like at least 30 hours of new voice acted story content that takes you back to locations last seen in Elder Scrolls Oblivion. It's going to include a new type of Doman event, and apparently this time you can expect it to be a bit more involved than Domans in the past. It's going to of course be adding a new trial, delves, public dungeons, mythics, antiquities, and new world bosses, but after all of that, the expected gives way to the unexpected. The most anticipated feature, but far from the only brand new thing coming with Gold Road, was the addition of scribing, which is going to be ESO's take on spellcrafting. The community has been begging for the developers to add spellcrafting to the game for as long as it's existed, so when Zoss announced this, the community couldn't have been more excited. Scribing is going to allow you to create your own spells with multiple different effects to create unique outcomes. You can create heals that also buff the group, you can create dots that debuff the enemy, and you can create an AoE ability that pulls in all the enemies around around you. In fact, there are over 4,000 different combinations available through this one mechanic alone. You often hear games say the options are endless, but in ESO, it's now more true than ever. Scribing will be unlocked through a quest line inside of the Gold Road expansion. You'll unlock grimoires, which are basically what they call skills that you can unlock and then augment. Each of these grimoires has a basic function, which is the thing that it always does no matter what you do to it. From there, you'll be able to modify it three different times. It's got a primary, secondary, and tertiary augment, or script. The primary effect will do things like determine the damage type of the skill. Is it a bleed damage or a fire damage ability? It will also determine how much it costs to cast it. The secondary effect is going to give the ability augments that are more unique to the skill. For instance, you can augment the bow ability to give you stacks of Hawkeye to further buff your other bow abilities. And finally, its tertiary effect will allow you to give yourself or your party buffs like Minor Maim. Probably my favorite direction that you can go with scribing is towards class mastery, wherein you'll be able to modify the skill to make its benefit unique to your class. For instance, you can make it so that it generates crux if you're an arcanist, or you can make it increase your stats based on how many enemies are around you if you're a dragon knight. Suffice it to say, players are going to have so much to play and to test here, which is probably why they've announced that the BTS for this chapter is going to be going live nearly two months before the chapter drops, so be sure to jump into the BTS server and help test it out if that's something you're into. But scribing isn't the only major surprise coming to ESO this year. One that I'm particularly excited for is that there's also earnable spell cosmetics being added to the game. They're calling the system styling, and so next to certain abilities, you'll see an icon that you can click, and then you can change the style 
style of that ability, thereby changing the way it looks. Sometimes it changes the effect or sometimes it changes the color. In general, you're still going to be able to tell what the skill is if you know what that skill normally looks like. It's just gonna have its own personal touch added to it. So if you've ever wished that you could unlock custom appearances for your spells in the game, well, this one's for you. I know this is something that I have begged the developers for many, many times. For instance, there's one that makes your lightning wall purple and then there's another one that makes your shooting star red so it looks more like a meteor. Because of this and some other things I'll talk about in a moment, ESO is adding more earnable cosmetics than ever before. On top of 4,000 unique skill combinations, inscribing 30 hours of questing and new enemies that you've never fought before. On that note, there's a really cool looking skin being added to the game for completionists out there. If you do all of the main story quests for all three factions, the DLC and the chapters, you'll unlock this. This is the type of achievement based cosmetics I've been begging for for years as well. So it's really exciting to see them doubling down on cosmetic unlocks that promote diving headfirst into all of ESO's content. I love to see it. And this is one I'm definitely going to unlock. I already have every single quest in the game done. So basically all I'm going to need to do is finish off the newest expansion when it drops and I'll be all caught up. So with this expansion, we are seeing almost the entirety of Cyrodiil now existing in the game. But that begs the question, since 2025 also falls into the 15 month long 10 year anniversary window, what zone are they gonna add then? That's gonna be a really big year as well. Personally, my money is on them adding another big piece of Skyrim into the map. It's time, you know it, I know it, they know it. So hopefully we see more Skyrim. But which part of Skyrim, which city from Elder Scrolls V do you wanna see added to ESO? Let me know down in the comments below. As for the trial being added, it's located in one of my favorite zones, Fargrave. This latest piece of 12 player content is called Lucent Citadel and will bring players to a long forgotten Daedric Vault. I'm curious to see how this ties into Fargrave, which from a lore perspective was already one of the most interesting zones in the game. Finn pointed out that like many trials before, this one includes mechanics that we've never seen before and places its difficulty somewhere around Sunspire's difficulty, if I understood him correctly. This year, ESO will also see the addition of two new components companions, and tons of housing quality of life improvements, and even a PvP system for you PvPers out there. Yes, I did mention PvP, and so did Sauce. You can tell that ESO is really going big for its 10-year anniversary, and it's trying to include something for everybody, as it's essentially got 15 months of celebrations planned and a roadmap to go with it. And if you didn't know, the reason that it lasts 15 months is because they're treating the time from the PC launch all the way to the console launch, which was 15 months after the PC launch, as the 10 year anniversary period. Which brings me to one of the most interesting parts of the event for me, which was the portion where Matt Fire and Pete Hines got on stage and reminisced about everything that went on behind the scenes to make ESO a reality. I could have listened to these two recount the things that went right and wrong and everything in between for hours. This conversation was really full of great bits of studio lore. I loved this and I would love to see more stuff like this from them. One of the many interesting tidbits that came from this was that Todd Howard had given some guidelines for what ESO was allowed to do and was not allowed to do. This is something I always suspected, but I'm not sure I had ever heard it confirmed before until now. For example, ESO was not allowed to leave the continent of Tamriel, so don't get your hopes up for ESO to be heading to Akavir. However, don't rule it out entirely either. They seemingly bent this rule when they went to High Isle a little bit, but Todd also initially said ESO wasn't allowed to have dragons, but in 2019, ESO got dragons. So it might be unlikely we'll ever see ESO visit the other continents, but hey, never say never. Or maybe that's just wishful thinking on my part. That's entirely possible as well. Pete Hines also said the word spear, and then Matt Fire said, don't talk about spears, please. So that means spear is basically confirmed for 2025 right? Eh, probably not, but I mean, that would also be amazing. After this, a different group of devs came up on stage and talked about ESO's early development, offering some more fascinating peeks behind the curtain of how the sausage was made. We heard about ESO's early roots as a more classic MMO experience, and how Skyrim's massive success led them to shift their design philosophy immensely to try to give players an experience that better resembled the franchise's best-selling title ever which was Skyrim, instead of being the classic MMO experience that it was being designed as at that moment. We also found out that ESO has seen over $2 billion in revenue in its lifetime, cementing Matt Fire's point about ESO being quietly successful. He also called ZeniMax a heads down studio, which is so accurate. Go ahead and look at what Matt Fire said on Twitter last week. You can't. He doesn't even have a Twitter account. 
that I'm aware of. He's instead quietly created a $2 billion behemoth while also starting development on another massive and unnamed MMO that is now more than half a decade into its development. And not a whisper. Come on, Matt, give us a breadcrumb. Anything, man, please. ZeniMax has created one of the most successful MMOs ever, but I can't help but feel like this is just the beginning for this studio. Between the massive announcements for ESO and the unannounced titles in development, there's a lot to watch out for from ZeniMax Online Studios. And I can now speak from personal experience, having been to two different events for ESO, one in Las Vegas and one here in Amsterdam. And I can confidently say that if you ever have the opportunity to go to one of Elder Scrolls Online's in-person events, you should absolutely do it. It's 1000% worth it. It's a ton of fun. They put a ton of effort into it. They've got a million different activities for you to participate in, food, drinks, and it's a great place to come and meet the developers, meet content creators, and of course, fellow players. Everyone I ran into in the event was having a ton of fun. So yeah, if you ever have the chance to go to one of these things, definitely take it. And to everyone who came up and said hi, I asked for a picture or even an autograph at the event. Thanks so much for making my day. I was honored, flattered, and humbled that you guys would ever want to do something like that. ESO and its community will always have a special place in my heart. After all, it's here where my content creation journey began. So thank you all. And for those of you that couldn't make it but are watching this video, thanks so much for listening to me rant about ESO again. Don't forget to check out the new Gold Road Prologue available for free. All you have to do is sign in and grab it from the Crown Store for free. It's there right now, so go for it. Massive shout out to my channel members. Thanks so much for supporting me in the big way that you do. If you want to become a channel member for perks like behind the scenes footage, private Discord channel access, and more, click the join button below or click the link in the description. Shout out to Bethesda for sponsoring this video. ESO is such a massive game and there's so many things that I wish I knew before I started playing. So I made a video about exactly that and it's popping up on screen right now. Be sure to check it out. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video.